the true story of Gianni Versace's murder. It was a twisted tale of sex, drugs, and a serial killer on the run that ultimately ended in the death of a fashion icon. How did Versace's assassin get away with his murder? And what drove him to do it in the first place? In 1978, Gianni Versace had a vision for a new fashion line and opened his first boutique in Milan. By 1997, he had 130 high-end boutiques around the world and was a global fashion titan worth $807 million. Known for his colorfully vibrant designs, he transcended the fashion world with his strategic tactic of winning over A-list supporters and putting them in the forefront of his brand like working with supermodels and having celebrities like Madonna and Elton John in the front row of his fashion shows. Sitting on top of a high-stakes empire, which he ran with sister Donatella and brother Santo, Versace needed a place where he could retreat and relax. And on a trip with Miami Beach's South Beach in 1991, he found his haven. Unfortunately, it was there, in his happy place, where he didn't have any worries in the world that Versace was killed by a gunman on the steps of his ocean drive home. On the morning of his murder. It was a morning like any other on July 15th, 1997. Versace woke up in Casa Casaurina, and he was looking for a little downtime. After all, Versace just had a wildly successful showing in Paris of his Atelier Versace Fall 1997 Couture Collection, with Naomi Campbell front and center. Plus, the Italy-America Chamber of Commerce was about to honor him as its Citizen of the Year in November. So he had come back to his Florida mansion to relax with his old partner, Antonio Di Amico. At around 8.30 a.m., Versace took a stroll to the news cafe. Versace strolled down the street, it wasn't unusual for the locals to see their world-famous neighbor out and about, enjoying their community. He often stopped by the cafe for magazines, and sometimes he'd splurge and get an orange juice. On this particular morning, he spent about $15 on five magazines, Business Week, Entertainment Weekly, People, New Yorker, and Vogue, and then headed back home. Less than a 10-minute walk away. A stranger shot Versace in broad daylight. Versace got home and started opening the gates into his oasis. He hadn't been gone for long. It was still before 9am, and the amico was just inside, sipping coffee on the veranda near the entrance. But before he could step inside, a stranger came out of nowhere, dressed in a grey t-shirt, black shorts and white hat, and carrying a backpack. And with a .40 caliber handgun, he shot two bullets into the back of the head of the global icon, in point-blank range. Suddenly, it was as if time stood still in sunny Miami Beach. Inside the gates, an ominous feeling immediately came over the Amico. I felt as if my blood had turned to ice, he told the Observer. According to the Guardian, he and their butler jumped up. The house had stained glass windows, so we couldn't see what happened from inside, so we had to open the gate. I saw Gianni lying on the steps with blood around him, the Amico said. At that point, everything went dark. I was pulled away. I didn't see anymore. His murder sent shockwaves around the globe. Versace was quickly transported to Jackson Memorial Hospital's Ryder Trauma Center in Miami, seven miles away. But by 9.15 a.m., he was pronounced dead at the age of 50. The shockwaves sent the world into a frenzy. The media descended on South Beach to cover the news of the unbelievable assassination. Hello, welcome back. These are pictures from uh, Miami, where the fashion designer Gianni Versace has been shot dead that the trendy Miami area called South Beach was the scene of a horrible crime and that one of the most beloved designers in the world is gone. The Italian fashion designer Gianni Versace was murdered here at his home. Onlookers crowded the entrance of the home, catching a glimpse of the four blood-stained coral steps before a county worker scrubbed them clean that afternoon. Later, the steps turned into a makeshift memorial with flowers and cards left behind. 
from the other side of the globe, other big names of the fashion world sent their condolences. The news of Gianni Versace's death has left me in a state of shock, Giorgio Armani said, according to The Guardian. My reaction is one of revolt against such an unnatural and violent death. While the fashion industry tried to make sense of the untimely death, the FBI was soon involved too. After all, this wasn't the perpetrator's first victim. Cunanan seemed to be waiting for Versace to return to Miami. While a couple of months had gone by, Cunanan had apparently been living in Miami since May 12th at Normandy Plaza, four miles away from the Versace mansion. He lived a sort of double life, dressing up and going out to enjoy the nightlife, and then mostly just eating pizza. He had also been seen buying books and pornographic magazines, according to Vanity Fair. For the last five years, Versace spent about half his time at his Miami Beach home, and on Thursday, July 10th, he returned. Two days later, Cunanan checked out of the Normandy Plaza, and on that Tuesday, he attacked. Since he shot in such close range, eyewitnesses saw him running, and the clothes he was wearing were found by the red truck in a parking garage. Finally, on July 23rd, a police team honed in on a Miami-area houseboat where he had been hiding out. There had been evidence he was trying to get a fake passport to leave the country. As the authorities approached, he shot himself dead. Versace's death left a hole in the fashion world, Without a suicide note, no explanation for why Cunanan killed Versace or how long he targeted him was ever revealed. About 2,000 mourners attended Versace's funeral at Milan's Gothic Roman Catholic Church on July 22nd. Among them, high-profile names he worked with, including Campbell, Armani, John and Madonna, Princess Diana. In one of the last times she was seen before her August 31st death the following month, sat next to John. To keep his legacy going, the family focused on his fashion empire. After all, he had left Donatella a 20% stake and Santo a 30% stake, and Donatella's daughter, Allegra, the remaining 50%, though she was only 11 at the time. Less than three months after his death, the Versace Milan Fashion Week show went on as it would have on October 10, 1997. But instead of his rivals sizing up the collection, they all showed up in support. Armani, Donna Curran, Miyuchi Prada and Karl Lagerfeld sat in the audience alongside celebrities like Cher, Boy George and Demi Moore. While the company was sold to Michael Kors for $2.1 billion in 2018, Donatella continues to oversee the brand. She's worked to put her own stamp on the label, but knows none of it will be possible without her dear brother. Tell me what it is. What's, what are you best known for? What is the look that you think that brings you the greatest sense of satisfaction? Play with my work. I think uh, the thing I want to be remembered is what I will do tomorrow. What I did is boring to me. Yeah. I think I'm too classic. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, hit the notification bell and leave a comment. I will be back soon with another interesting topic. Until then, be happy!